Streaming live now on News8000.com. You're watching WKBT Lacrosse. This is News 8 Now at noon. Good afternoon and thanks for watching News 8 Now. I'm Jeremy Wall. It's June 28, 2023. Let's get into the news. Senator Tammy Baldwin introduced new legislation today to respond to future pandemics. The Disease X Act of 2023 would invest resources in developing medical countermeasure medical countermeasures to prepare against future unknown health threats. In a statement, Senator Baldwin said, quote, we need to be as best prepared as possible to save lives, our economy and our way of of life. The act has been supported by a number of medical institutions. A lacrosse team was in court uh, was in court for allegedly beating someone violently on Saturday, June 17th. 17 year old Javon Long is charged with first degree recklessly endangering safety with the use of a dangerous weapon and aggravated battery with a dangerous weapon. Both are felony charges and both are charged as party to a crime. According to a criminal complaint, a man was found on Gold Street bleeding heavily with a head injury. The victim said he didn't remember what happened. Police later got video from a community member showing two people violently beating the victim on the street and at one point using a bike to slam down on the victim's head. Police later arrested Long at his home. The other suspect is a minor and was arrested after showing up at City Hall with his parents. The Cross County Judge Scott Horn released Long on a $5,000 signature bond. Another rally was, was held outside the La Crosse County Courthouse to call for changes after the death of a six-year-old from Meadary. The group has been outside of the courthouse multiple times since the arrest of Josie Dykeman, who's accused of killing Alexavier Pedrin. Pedrin's family is calling for changes to how the county handles child abuse. I'm hoping to make um, reform changes um, for CPS and um, policies and procedures for welfare checks. Dykeman is scheduled to be in court again on Friday with the next court date happening in October. Hadrin's family and supporters plan to continue rallying outside the courthouse. The controversy over allowing ATVs on roadways was the focus of an ordinance meeting in Onalaska. The proposed ordinance would allow ATVs and UTVs to drive on town and county roads. But most people at the meeting spoke out against the idea. A group of residents have started their own petition to keep the town from allowing those vehicles. They argued their neighborhoods are more suburban than neighboring towns with similar ordinances. They say they are concerned for their neighbors' safety. I think what we're trying to say is um, there are no ATV routes in La Crosse County and so the ATV riders want to make our roads be their routes and that may be appropriate in rural areas but it may not be appropriate in our neighborhoods. Those in support of the ordinance say they don't see any danger with operating on county or town roads when following the speed limit. The town did not take any official action. The next meeting will be held in July. There's a pretty hazy start here to the afternoon across much of the area. We're still dealing with some of that wildfire smoke coming in from the north from Canada. That is causing some of those skies to look a little bit on the hazy side. This is in effect until noon Thursday for Wisconsin, in effect until 12 a.m. Thursday for southeast Minnesota, and in effect for Iowa through Wednesday. So if you are dealing with, if you're sensitive to this stuff, rather, make sure to limit your time outside. Try to spend more time inside. And here's a check on that afternoon forecast here for you. In fact, you can see some of the haze out there from city. Cam. Uh, a couple of thunderstorms possible around 1 o'clock, if not just looking at mix of sun and clouds. Temperatures uh, into the 80s with that southerly wind breeze as well at around 10 to 15 miles an hour. And overall, our temperatures uh, into the 80s as well. Highs uh, climbing up into the mid 80s later this afternoon with seasonable temperatures to work with in general. But uh, stay tuned. We do have a, a chance for of seeing some strong to severe thunderstorms for parts of the area. I'll have more details on that coming up in my full weather forecast in a few minutes. Back to you. All right, thanks, Derek. As, as, as many Wisconsinites head out on the water this summer, the Wisconsin DNR is reminding people that safety comes first. Officials say 80% of all fatal boating incidents involve drownings. DNR officials encourage you to wear life jackets at all times and to be responsible in consuming alcohol on the water. Alcohol can blur your judgment and reaction time, which can also cause drownings. Well, after a year-long study, the decision is in. The Lacrosse Center operations will belong, will still belong to the city. News 8 Now's Emily Haugen spoke with city leaders and explains how they're putting together future leadership plans. A city is driven by people. In downtown Lacrosse, the Lacrosse Center brings those people together. We didn't 
have a good understanding of what this building is worth, you know, not only to the city, but to the region. An expansion in 2021 and center coordinator Art Faye's retirement in 2022 ushered in a new era and another responsibility for Parks, Recreation and Forestry Director Jay Odegaard. Jay wears a lot of hats and is, does a lot of different things from the city. City leaders held a study to decide whether or not to hand the lacrosse center over to a private company. Ultimately, the center's board decided to keep it within the city. Board President Brent Smith says the interim team was already doing great work. If you look at our revenue, if you look at uh, the number of events, you look at the customer satisfaction, it's all plus, plus, plus. Odegaard agrees. We really see a lot of efficiency when we're talking about shared use of equipment, but also, you know, being able to move staff in and out of different positions. Odegaard says the leadership team has been selected, but now they're waiting for city approval. There will be deputy uh, directors that you know, manage day-to-day -day operations along with my oversight. That approval could come in August. Going forward, Odegaard hopes to shape the lacrosse center's identity by showcasing local talent. How we create that as more of a grassroots uh, venue is, is something that I really want to see us move forward with. He hopes those efforts will bring more people here to stay. Odegaard says that while the property will be managed by the city, they've successfully contracted a number of staff members to help handle different responsibilities, including security and cleaning services. And again, we will likely learn more about who in the city will take on those leadership responsibilities in August. Lacrosse area Holocaust educators are celebrating a reissue of a book about a World War II hero. Viterbo University educators and community members met at Pearl Street Books last night to recognize an updated release of the book Squirrel is Alive. It's a first person account of 16 year old Mary Rostad who lived through the Nazi occupation of Belgium. After a year of sabotage in the German for forces, Rostad left her family to serve as a U.S. Army courier codenamed Squirrel. The original version of the book is being taught in Westby and Clot hopes more area school districts can share what she calls a story for all ages. If you're interested in the book, we've got a link at news8000.com. After the break, what you need to know ahead of the busy holiday weekend to make sure your travel plans don't fall through. Your consumer news is after the break. Welcome back. U.S. stocks rebounded Tuesday. The Dow soared 212 points. The Nasdaq climbed 219 points. And the S&P 500 rose 49 points. CBS News' Chanel Call has the latest business headlines from the Big Apple. Ford is moving ahead with layoffs this week, slashing hundreds of engineering jobs in the U.S. and Canada as the company pivots its focus to electric vehicles. This comes as Volvo became the latest car company to announce it will convert its EVs to Tesla's North American charging standard port starting in 2025. Ford, General Motors and Rivian have also announced plans to convert to Tesla's standard, which will give owners access to Tesla's charging network across North America. AAA estimates that Americans will set a record for holiday travel over the long 4th of July weekend. More than 50 million people are expected to travel at least 50 miles from home. It comes as thousands of customers have been stranded at airports in the Northeast since this weekend due to severe weather. And some iconic props like Harry Potter's cloak and glasses from the Chamber of Secrets film and Princess Leia's ceremonial white gown from Star Wars Episode Four are now up for grabs. They're part of a 1,400-piece collection of film and TV memorabilia that are now up for auction. The auction run by Prop Store starts today at L.A.'s Peterson Automotive Museum and lasts through Friday. That's your CBS News Money Watch report. For more, log on to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Chanel Call. That's it for your afternoon consumer news. As we head to break, here's a live look at the New York Stock Exchange. Stay with us. More news is next.
If you drink coffee in the morning, it may not be just the caffeine that's waking you up. And children who are bookworms tend to have better, better mental health. Kristen Benavides has a look at the day's top health stories. Children who read have better mental health and perform better at cognitive tests, according to a study published in the journal Psychological Medicine. Researchers looked at 10,000 kids in the U.S. Those who begin reading for pleasure between 2 and 9 years old measure higher for verbal learning, memory, and other skills, and show fewer signs of depression and behavioral problems. The study found 12 hours of reading a week was the optimal amount. The experience of drinking coffee may be more effective at waking you up than the actual caffeine in that cup of joe. Scientists in Portugal took MRI scans of study participants before and after their coffee and found increased brain activity compared to those who only took caffeine. Both make people alert, but the cup of coffee does a better job at increasing goal-directed behavior. People with OCD have an imbalance between neurochemicals in parts of the brain key to decision-making and habit. Neuroscientists at the University of Cambridge say it's a major piece of the puzzle in understanding obsessive-compulsive disorder and hope the findings will lead to new treatments. Those are some of the day's top health stories. Cristian Benavides, CBS News, Miami. All right, well, that's it for our medical news today. Here's a look at CityCam 8. Derek is in next with our forecast. Well, air quality alerts continue here for the Cooley region, so if you fall under that sensitive group category, make sure to limit yourself outside, especially for those of you that are sensitive to these air particles outside from the particulates from the wildfire smoke originating all the way from Canada, still creating some problems for some of us here to deal with over these next few days. It's also creating some pretty hazy conditions. In fact, the smoke tracker is showing that the smoke's going to continue to lift its way north because of that south wind sending the smoke right back over us here uh, for us today. Remember, this is the same smoke we were dealing with yesterday. Now it's coming back because our winds are changing up from the south, and it's going to be around here for us to deal with today, creating those hazy light conditions throughout the day and also as we head into tonight as well. The smoke may even stick around here as we head into early tomorrow morning. We may see a little bit of smoke kind of linger here into early tomorrow as well before it begins to clear out by tomorrow afternoon to the evening. By that point, I don't think the skies will be uh, rather too hazy compared to what we've been seeing here today and and yesterday. So here's a check on your day planner. A few isolated thunderstorms possible around one o'clock. Mix of sun and clouds really throughout much of the afternoon with a chance of a shower or storm in some spots. With our forecast high temperatures today expected to rise into the 80s. A high of 81 degrees much cooler is expected in Eau Claire. And check out Ladysmith up there. 77 degrees for you up in Russ County. But much warmer however further south you are in La Crosse County. You're looking at highs around 87 here for you. While the rest of us handful of locations are just looking at highs into the low to mid 80s here today. So we do have a chance here of seeing some severe weather. This was actually just recently updated uh, to mainly include the Chippewa Valley under this level two slight risk of severe weather, while La Crosse County and areas down south are under a level one marginal risk. The main threats are going to be gusty winds, some large hail. The possibility does exist for an isolated tornado or two as well, with the main timing between 6 p.m. to 1 a.m. as well. So something we'll keep our eyes on here for you News 8. Tune in tonight to get the very latest on any potential thunderstorms or severe thunderstorms that could develop. So let's take you through the rest of the afternoon. Here's 4 o'clock and a couple of uh, scattered showers and a few thunderstorms in some spots. Here comes that developing line of thunderstorms moving into the Chippewa Valley around 9 o'clock. It's going to continue to make its way to the southeast and move into the La Crosse area as we head into overnight tonight and then should clear out by 5 a.m. tomorrow morning. Maybe a slight chance of a shower, but for the most part, just left over with some clouds. Those remaining clouds should clear out as we head to 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. And by 2 o'clock, we could see some increasing moisture from the system, still providing some showers and thunderstorms for us to work with again as we head into tomorrow afternoon and then uh, dissipating here as everything settles down as we head into tomorrow night. So a check now on your eight day forecast showing that our highs will be into those mid to upper 80s these next few days. Chances of showers and storms still in the forecast through Saturday, but very low chances. However, highs into the low 90s as we head into next week. Back to you. All right, thanks, Derek. And coming up after the break with all the beautiful scenery in the Cooley region, it's no wonder why the city, lacrosse rank, the city of Lacrosse ranks high on this particular, particular list. We'll be right back. Thank you for watching News 8 Now. 
Expect more. Lace up your shoes, put on your helmet, and head out to those bike trails. La Crosse has been named one of the best mid-sized cities in the U.S. to go biking in. That's approaching the People for Bikes, a group that evaluates the best cities and towns for biking. High-scoring cities earn points for factors like relocated space for biking and protected bike lanes. The number of people biking across the state has increased over the last few, year, few years, with weekday rides up 27% since 2019. Stay with us. We will have one more check of your forecast when we return. A few thunderstorms are possible here today, but especially tonight, and we'll keep those storm chances in the forecast through at least Saturday. Mix of sun and clouds Sunday through Tuesday with highs mainly into the 80s, but uh, warming up into the low 90s or at least approaching the low 90s as we head into next week. Lows mainly into the 60s. Back to you. All right, thank you so much, Derek, and thank you for turning into this edition of News 8 Now at Noon. We'll have more news and headlines tonight at 5. We hope you tune in. Thank you.